Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. And instead of a vlog this week, I decided I would take you on a tour of some of my craft projects that I have in the works and the things that I have finished recently. Um, I thought that would be fun and I always mention these things but I never show them to you. So, sit back, relax, and I will tell you I am gonna share this as well on my Cambridge Way channel that I kind of abandoned last year, but we need to get that back up and running because that's more my crafty channel. But for right now, we are gonna show you some things that I have in the, in the making. And the first thing I'm working on is a knitting project. I'm gonna see if I have a picture of it. I can't show you the pattern. Um, but it's going to be a shawl and it's called the Caroline shawl and it is, um, it was designed for off the grid needle arts, Caroline. It was designed for her by Josh Moll, M-O-L-L. -L. <laughs> it's my wee little start. I just got it all, you know, got it going. And the yarn I'm using is actually something I hand dyed myself a while ago. And I dyed it to kind of look like um, cobalt blue with a little bit of rust in there. So it's going to be a very springy color. It's like very light with just the natural yarn and then these blues with the little specks of like dark in it. So I only have one repeat done of that. We have a long way to go, but that's okay. So I'm working on that. And, and this is being stored in a bag that I made a while ago, actually, when Sarah and I went to New York City for a long weekend, um, gosh, back in 2016, I made this bag and it's the New York skyline at winter time. And I had actually made Sarah one and I put a knit it cause she knits too. I put a knitting project in it with a pattern, the yarn and the needles that she would need. And we both had the same hat to work on. So I have that if that's in there. And then the other project I will show you that I'm working on is called um, the Kringles by Little House Needleworks. And that's what it's gonna look like finished. It's fairly large. And this came out, oh gosh, I wanna say in 2019, if I had to guess, 2020, came out in 2020. But I believe it was, uh, pre-COVID I got this so it's probably like in January of 2020 but this is pretty it's gonna be a very decent size print and I'm gonna have it framed so this is where I'm at so this is it's a department store called Kringles so the name of the store will be here these are storefronts so this is the front door there will be scenes in each not in eight of these little rooms and there'll be decorations all over the place. I'm currently, you can barely see it, working on the roof right now. And then this, these here are magnets. This holds my like needle, it's a needle minder, and I use this one that I made to hold my pattern. And this is in a Q-snap. This is 32 count, some type of linen that I dyed myself in a gray color. I wanted some texture to it, so you can see it's kind of modeled. Um, it is a, it is <laughs> 32 count linen is pretty, is probably the smallest linen that I'll be able to cross stitch on. It's not Ada. Um, if you can see up there, those tiny little holes, I doubt you'll see them, but they're pretty tiny. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm just working on this and it's in the Q-snap. I don't like to put the snap over my knit, over my stitches, because I think it flattens them. So, <laughs> I can show you the back. It just hangs loose. So I have the top in here and the two sides are connected. And I leave the bottom flapping. And then I'll show you um, what I use. This 
the floss for this, I also ordered, I ordered this whole setup from my local needle store. Um, now they, they do have the floss, that's all the different colors, and it, I bought the hand dyed floss. So these are all the different colors that I will use. And they are from Classic Color Works is the name of the company. All but I think two colors are Classic Color Works. And then like two colors or three colors maybe are um, DMC. And these baggies I just get at Joanne. And I put them on these little ring binders. And it keeps my floss from getting dusty and messed up when I'm not using it. So I have the colors out that I'm using on the roof and the rest are in here. And this has how it comes from when you purchase it. And this is hand dyed by this company. And this color is trail dust. So when it's time for me to use this color, I will fix it on its card and then I have a loop that I have a little ring binder, uh, what are these called? Notebook rings. I have one that has just my colors that I'm currently working on. Um, this was not an inexpensive project to do. So I wanna make sure that all of my cloth stays protected when I'm not using it. And then I did make these bags. So this is just a little, um, oops needle threader this is just a small notions pouch that i keep my floss and my little floss card but just as indicator of the the cost involved the pattern was 25 dollars the floss was 50 dollars for all the colors so it has everything there's alex every color that i'll need hand dyed and typically I would use DMC. I don't have an issue with that, but this was going to be something I wanted to keep for a very long time and I wanted it to be a special project. So I bought everything that came with it. And then the, the fabric, like I said, I dyed myself. That was probably $15. So, well, probably 20 because I had to buy the dye. And then I store it in this bag I made because it was supposed to go to Canada with me. So I made this bag and it holds... It holds the original pattern. I do make copies to work from so I can write on them, but then I throw them away. I don't share them or anything. Um, so this would hold, when I travel with this project, it can hold all of my notions that goes with it, my floss in that bag, the pattern, any copy pieces I'm still working from. And then it zips shut. And I sewed this and I actually even cut the fabric on the bottom so it would be one direction all the way around. And then the center or the this bag with some other fabric, but it matches on here. So it's a Christmas pack prog Christmas project and I feel like it's appropriate. And then when I'm working on it, I have this i got it on etsy and i can't remember the seller's name but it it's got all it's handmade and i can these tighten down and then my it, this holds my um knitting or my needlework like that so it sits on my lap and it is even a spot for my pen or whatever but this sits on my lap and that holds it holds my needlework in front of me so I can two-handed yeah so I love this and I love that it folds down pretty flat so if I want to travel with it I can and this I think is the medium size it's not the small and I definitely don't think it's the large but yeah uh, the gentleman makes them so that is the Kringles that I'm working on when I say I'm doing my cross stitch this is pretty much it and I'm excited that I will have the roof done at some time before I die it's very it's very slow going the roof but that's okay 
Now we'll get into all the stuff that I have recently finished. So the first thing I, it's not the first thing, but the first thing I'm gonna show you, I did make this shirt for Pelotonia. I'll be wearing this to the opening ceremonies on Friday. I used my Cricut and the front says Pelotonia 2021 and the back says thank you and these are all the people that um, de donated to my ride financially donated to me so this shirt it's a little big I didn't have the right size but that's okay I'll wear like a tank under it plus I need a room on the back but I love it and these are the colors that they're doing this year at Peloton. It's a little different every year, but this year it's blue. I mean, gold and, excuse me, I rode my bike today. It's black and gold and white. So that is perfect. All right. Now, when people in my life have babies, I like to knit them something or crochet them something. And um, my... <laughs> She's my niece, cousin. We'll call her cousin. My cousin's husband's niece. Their niece on her husband's side of the family. But she's family. And she had a baby a couple of years ago, Levi, and I made him a sweater. And she's pregnant again. So I crocheted a baby blanket. Um, and this yarn is some yarn that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. It's Burnat is the brand. So it's not Dollar Tree branded yarn, but they had it. And so I took four skeins of it that I bought and I created this baby blanket. And then I just took some gray that I had and edged it. It is a baby boy that's coming. And this pattern, let me find the corner it starts in started it's this pattern is a corner to corner so let me find the corner uh -huh, here we go no wrong here we go so I started it literally starts with one stitch and it grows all the way out and then back in and that's how I got the little stripes in the middle and it's just it grows this way and then you turn it back in it's so intuitive like it it's I can just sit and do it. You know, you learn the stitch and it's the same stitch through the whole thing. I would say it took me, you know, a month, but I only worked on it in the evenings after work. So I need to, now that I have showed you, I need to wrap this up so that my cousin can take it to her or when she sees her next, she can give it to her for the baby. And the baby's not due until November, so it's fine. I actually want to send a little gift for her little boy too. So I'll need to um, go pick up something for him because he's little, he doesn't know, but I know she'll love it. And I just love giving things for folks that are having babies because that's something that they can, they can keep it, you know, and have it as a keepsake. But I mean, this is totally washable. It's acrylic yarn. I wouldn't make a baby sweater out of wool or a baby blanket because that's just too much pressure on the parents to have to wash it properly. This can just go in the washer and dryer and the baby can lay on it on the floor or whatever. It's to be used, not looked at, in my opinion. Now this sweater project is 100% wool. And this is a sweater that I knit. I started it last year. Oh, I'm obsessed with it. The wool, the brown wool is not super wash. So I, I have to hand wash this always. The colors are super wash that I got from Knit Picks. The brown is 100%, I don't know the, the blend of wool. Is wool, it's pretty long with some nice long sleeves and guys I cannot tell you how obsessed I am with this sweater I cannot wait for winter so I can wear it with probably I would say some brown leggings or some jeans um the pattern is it's a it's called the throw over by Andrea Maurer I believe my friend Heidi also knit it and um, hers is just obviously a different color than mine. 
but I had the I had the brown yarn so I bought a kit that came with this brown yarn and I didn't love the sweater and I was almost done with it and I knew I just ooh, what's that? I knew I wouldn't um, wear it I wasn't happy with it so I ripped it all out all of it and I held on to the yarn and I just till I decided um, something that I wanted and I decided this was the sweater I love the ribbed I still have to trim some of the um, threads on the inside the yarn so they have all been woven in what I do is I weave them in and then I wash it and block it to dry so I have to wash it in some wool wash and then I lay it on the uh, mat to dry and then I'll go back and trim up all these little yarns but they're all woven in so it doesn't really matter and then this is color work so the threads are or the yarns are all floated on the back side here like I don't cut them in between so the pink is carried through the everywhere this pink started here all the way down to here the pink is carried through and in some places I've got pink green and blue all carried around so I I'm just in love with this sweater guys and I want to I want to knit another one, but I won't let myself knit another pro start another knit sweater. Um, well, I want to finish that shawl first, but until I finish the Kringles cross stitch, because it's such a large project, I don't like to have that many large scale things going at one time. But I do have another pattern already. I don't have the yarn yet, but I think that my friend Heidi, who also knit this, and I are going to dye our own yarn. And I'm going to do like a um, burnt orange, I think, and make like a rusty burnt orange. It's going to be a cardigan. But for now, I have this sweater to wear. And like I said, I'm just, I'm so happy with the fit. It just makes me happy. But it's obviously 90 degrees outside, so we won't be putting this on anytime soon. And that is A-OK. -okay. Now, with wool sweaters, if you're not you're not familiar like I will wear a t-shirt under this so it doesn't get like my body oil and stuff on it because it has to be hand washed and it does take like it's a work you got to wash it in the in the tub with some warm water and then carefully squeeze out the water without like stretching anything and then lay it on the floor and then I put a fan and it's a process so I will do the best I can to wear this, you know, multiple times before I wash it. And to keep it clean and fresh, I will um, wear a t-shirt underneath it. Just like I said, to keep any body odors or oils off of the sweater, you know. And cost-wise, to, to make a sweater with hand-dyed yarn. So like I dye my own yarn, for me to buy enough yarn wool to make the next sweater is going to cost me like $70 of undyed yarn. If I was going to buy yarn that somebody else dyed, that hand dyed it, that would cost me close to $300. And if I bought commercial wool yarn, like from a store like Knit Picks, not Joanne and Michaels, they don't really sell wool. I think they have a little bit, but to get like Knit Picks is a store I would I would order it from, and I picked out a color just to see, and it was seventy two dollars to order it from Knit Picks. So, you know, it's not only an investment of time to knit a sweater; it can be very costly if you're using wool. I wouldn't use acrylic to knit a sweater, and that's me. I mean, you can do it; it's not a problem, and people do it all the time. But to me, it's I'm about the process. So I want to dye the yarn myself and then I want to knit the sweater and then I want to wear it and be so happy every time I wear it. <laughs> um, and like I said, this, these colors of yarn, this is wool, it came from Knit Picks. I order from them very regularly. However, I have been not purchasing yarn for some time now because I need to utilize the yarn that I have. Um, the only issue is a lot of the yarn that I have is like it's called sock weight yarn, which is what you would knit socks with and shawls so this 
This yarn here that I that I dyed up some time ago, this is soft weight yarn. And I have a ton of this. It's just very thin. It's fine. Finer than worsted weight, which is your standard average knitting yarn. I don't have any worsted weight, and I certainly don't have a sweater quantity of worsted weight. Um, crazy cats. So anyway, long story long, eventually I will be casting on, and I'm hoping in like a couple months, I will have finished this frost stitch, or at least gotten it to a point that I'm comfortable casting on another sweater. And the sweater I want to do is the Antler Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. And I actually, that is the sweater I knit the baby version for uh, Levi. This pattern goes from size zero, baby, newborn, up to adult, like four or five X. It's an amazing pattern. So it was worth my purchase. Okay, and then the last thing I finished, which was my oldest, maybe. No, the sweater was the oldest. This is similar. Mm -hmm. I finally finished, I'm trying to find the up my here i think this is it yeah my lap quilt okay i will stand up in a minute and show you the full thing i'm not a quilter just so you know and i will venture a guess that this will never happen again it was i don't have the personality for it is what it is so i bought this fabric these five inch squares in a pack from a company and they came in five inch square. So I just had to cut the stripping around it and pick how I was gonna lay them out and stitch them together. Well, I didn't do a very good job stitching it together. So it's all very uneven and I'm okay with that, but that's what stresses me out. So that's why I probably will not do it again. But it's just it's black on the back. I did um, sew on the binding and then I hand stitched it along the back. And then I didn't go and have it quilted. I did the tie technique where I took silk, uh, this is pearl cotton embroidery floss, all six strands, and I just tied each corner. And that was a process. But it's held together, there is batting involved, and this is just a repeat. I will stand up and I will show you, or at least give you a better view. And it's more of a lap size than, um, I mean, it, it fits on the back of my couch. So it might end up there at Christmas time, or it'll sit on my chair with me and I'll just use it as a, a lap blanket because it is very um, comfy and it's soft. So like here, that's not a five inch square. <laughs> it got cut off. Oh, guys. This was, so I, I just have, with my personality, things need to line up. And if they don't line up, they freak me out. And that's what happened here. They didn't line up. I'm happy with the quilt and I love it, but I will probably never make another quilt. So I'm gonna do it inside out so I can store it because it's, it's August, guys. I don't need to have this out anytime soon. So it'll get put away with my Christmas stuff. Um, I can wash it if I decide that it needs to be laundered. I mean, it's, it's, it's sewn together. It's not going to go anywhere. But that is everything that I have to show you that I've been working on um, handicraft-wise. Um, you know, different different than my Dollar Tree DIYs. This, these are more handcrafts. I wanted to share them with you. And like I said, I will be putting this up on my other channel and that channel should be linked down below. I don't have very many videos up yet, but it's called the Cambridge way. And I'm thinking monthly, I will do some updates on my shawl and on my cross stitch and any other, I do have like a hat going that's knitted. I may have some socks on the needles. Who knows? Who knows what I have? I have to find all this stuff. But I definitely have a hat. I know it's in the, I'm gonna point to it, but you don't care. There's an ottoman behind you that the cat is sleeping on. And in there I keep, <laughs> I store all my craft stuff in my storage ottoman instead of blankets like normal people. I keep 
all my projects that are in the works in that ottoman. I know it's crazy. All right, guys, that is everything for today. I hope you enjoy. Um, if you do, give the video a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment down below, tell me what your favorite thing is, and I will talk with you later. Bye.